Hey, David. Well, I'm Vince, Only Roofers Podcast. Filling in for Liz today as the main host. So, Liz, we miss you, but here we go. Um, David, tell us a little about yourself, how you got in the industry, what you do in the industry. Hi, David Summerlee, and I'm a dad. My daughter's 15, straight A's, good student. Nice. It's like my whole world, but other than that, my passion is in storm restoration. Okay. And I uh, started out in marketing, actually. Wow. I sold marketing to roofers. Uh, so they, when I first went into marketing, uh, nobody wanted to talk to people from New Jersey. What? Because they were very blunt. Ah, oh, And get so that you a call lot. them and they just like, tell me the truth or get off my phone, you know? And I liked that. Right. It was very direct. It was easy. Like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Right. You understand or not? Move on to the next call. So I was just whipping through them. And then I realized, oh, roofers seem to have projects that are a lot of money. Big Maybe I item. should start marketing directly to roofers. Right. And so I started calling roofers. And so in doing that, I found a company through a long chain of events. I found this company, sold marketing to a business partner of theirs that they were actually splitting off with. Okay. And then it was like their premium package. And so I was happy. And then they called me and they said they needed me to come in for their other company. Right. I was like, perfect. I'm going to sell them another premium marketing per- package. Perfect. I'm going to be the boss this week. <laughs> so I was excited. And then I go in and they're sitting me down for an interview. And I didn't know that's what was coming. Oh. And I was like, hey, guys. like, Not what I thought was for. I appreciate that. I thought we were going to do a marketing thing today. I don't know anything about roofs. I don't know anything about this storm restoration thing you're talking about. I'm sorry. I'm not qualified for this. Right. And they were like, no, no, you don't understand. You took care of us. We could tell you actually cared. And that if we had a problem and we called you, you were going to answer. That's the kind of person we're looking for. Gotcha. This roofing and storm restoration stuff, we can teach you in five minutes. I said, all right, cool. Let's get started. I got five minutes. Yeah. And the training was about five minutes. I figured the rest out in the field. Okay. And a lot of it from actually from insurance adjusters, good ones. Right. You know? Probably learn from the bad ones too, but right. a lot of it is from the really good insurance adjusters. They care about what they're doing, and they want to do right by the homeowners. Mm-hmm. And so, if you're open to it, they'll teach. Right. And so, I learned a lot. And then coming to all these industry events, I learned a ton from that. And then uh, other things like National Claims Institute and stuff right. like that. Everywhere you can learn and grow, whether it be Adam Benzman on YouTube, right. Rebecca Schweitzer on there. I got a lot from those guys. Right. I was coming up in this. Little pieces from everyone and yeah, make, uh, make your own. Yeah, a little bit Make your own stew. Right. That's and just be open to learn and not just push your way all the time. So, so getting into that from someone who came kind of marketing background, sales background, jumping into into roofing, uh, roofing industry, restoration industry. What were like some of the things you saw where, you know, maybe that you've brought over, uh, wins, failures, you know, things like that, where you've seen, you know, someone who's jumped into an industry kind of cold turkey, right? And so give us a little background on that. Like what was your, what were your, you know, takes on that? So I grew up moving constantly. Okay. And for a long time, like I was almost a little whiny about that. Like, oh, I moved constantly. And then I realized, now that I'm in storm restoration, I move constantly. <laughs> I need to settle down somewhere, right? Uh, and I'm in the process of doing that. Clearwater. I right. love it there. It's paradise. And I think I'm going to stay there. I'm at the corporate office now, and nice. I'm just going to make that way. Um, so that's a cool shift for me. Nice. But, uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, coming from a marketing background, I probably noticed some things with marketing more mm-hmm. than usual. Um, but also, you know, years ago I wanted to do like a company that was like an efficiency expert that would go in and find the inefficiencies in a company and bring right. in solutions. And hey, you probably need to get rid of these three people and these kind of positions you probably need to bring in, you know, those kind of That's things. That's a great tool. Great. Uh, and so when I go in to work for a company, often, even if the company's wonderful, there's always things that can be improved. And so I just naturally am always looking for those things and offering them up. And so you're about streamline. You're about yeah. inefficiencies and yeah, finding efficiencies. I think that we should take care of people and right. have an efficient program. Or at the end of the day, the property owner is what's important. As long as they're happy and they got what is deserved for them and that what was promised to them or more, that's all that matters. Do, do you feel that's a failing part in the industry, is inefficiencies? I think that there's a lot of improvement available to us. Fair. I'm not, I, I, I agree. Very political answer. But do you think there is a failing in it, inefficiencies because of keeping up with the Joneses or that's what they learned at their other company and now they started another one so they sort of just replicated what they've learned and so on and so forth and not trying to really find solutions or just d- duplicating or replicating? I think there's probably a ton of that that goes on. Right. I think we have an industry where literally anyone can go from a nobody 
to a, a real badass to really grow and be successful and it leaves an opportunity for people who maybe don't have the education or the background right. that you would expect to be a CEO of a company. You know, that experience, there's a lot that comes into that mm-hmm. that you learn and then you don't make certain mistakes. Mm-hmm. And so there's a learning curve there. And so I think that some of that comes from that. We have an opportunity that is explosive that we can just grow so fast. Maybe we're not always ready for it. Right. But you can always go back and improve. As long as you're constantly trying to learn and improve. Iterate, iterate, iterate. Be okay. Fix the problems, find the solution. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, bring in other experts. If there's a, if you have areas that you're weak right. or failing or you could grow. Don't be scared to ask. Bring them in. You could literally, in this industry, you can outsource everything. You can literally run a, a general contracting business and outsource every bit of it. Yeah. So Very bring true. in the experts where you're not an expert or where you don't have passion. Bring in experts to do that part. So we have a lot of guests on, and they all have different like uh, you know expertise and training and um, backgrounds. All, 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 all you know, they're production guys, they're sales guys, they're owners. They're you know they were and, and they, now they own their owners now, but they were production guys two months ago, or they were sales guys two months ago. And so I find that like a lot of times you hear in the same kind of same thing is it's inefficiencies, trainings, and also a lot of like what you just said is like there's a lot of there's a, you can outsource everything. But people are scared to, right? They don't want to. They're, they're, they're. I mean, the right word is, you know, they're, 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 like, terrified almost of like, well, am I gonna lose my business? Am I, am I, am I, am I, am I losing like myself, right? Or, or am I a loser for not being able to do this myself? Like, no. Meaning, like, everyone has their lane, their expertise, what they're good at, what they sure. know, right? Like, not everyone's the most efficient person in the world, right? They're really great salespeople, right? right? So they're not going to be able to maybe create maybe a great sales process because they're not great efficient people, right? But maybe they'd be great to pick their brain and find sales tactics and then make it efficient, right? So, like, I think that's sort of a funny place where I just from doing interviews is, like, I see a lot of people, like, sign of, like, hemming and hawing or the, or the ones who have jumped and made that decision of like, hey, I'm not great at brand, let me find a branding person. I'm not great at sales, let me find a, brand, a sales coach and so on. Where where do you think, and maybe you have seen it or you haven't seen it, do you think there's that intimidation factor? Sure. I mean, everybody's got fears and insecurities and hesitation, right? One of the things I heard years ago was that successful people aren't fearless, they're courageous. But you also have to have the courage to know, hey, this isn't my strong suit. Right. Maybe I can learn here, but in the meantime, let me bring somebody else in that can help me. Right. And when you're talking about the, that control factor of, I know I can do this pretty good and I don't want to give that up to anyone else, that makes you the lid or the bottleneck of the company. My boss said it recently, like, hey, I, I don't want to be the bottleneck here. And so, you know, you let go of some things, respect, right? Right. That's awesome. Right. And I always think of like a hammer. If you're holding the hammer up by the head, to try and have full control of it, you're not gonna be able to hammer very well. Right. So if you let go and loosen up and go to the other end of that hammer right. handle, you got a lot more power and you're gonna be able to go a lot farther. Right. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree with you. I think like just with meeting people and talking to people, it seems like the same little like hiccup point or bump or whatever and guys have got over and they talk about it or they haven't got over and it's like they want to get on the podcast or don't get on the podcast because of it almost like right i you know i don't want i'm very nervous to get on like if you, i want to get on but i'm very nervous to be in front of the camera it's like get on like it's the only way you're not going to be nervous eventually you got to get on and it's just that you know with business and, and the next thing our processes it's like that get over the hump and it, it, Maybe it's not greener on the other side, but it's definitely not as bad as it is here, right? Or you're just going to live in regret. I, I always listen to guys like Gary Vee and Lewis House. I love Gary Vee. And they're like, look, I wasn't great at first. I went out there and put out content for years before anybody was listening to me. Yep. And over Wine time, sucked. they became awesome. Yeah. And it's the same way every great speaker that I've heard talk about it said, look, it took me like three years of sucking at speaking, but still getting out there and doing it. And then I was good at it. Right. And so I just, for me, I've been hesitating in that way. I don't go get on stages. And every time I'm watching someone on stage in my gut, I'm like, oh, why, why do I feel like I'm supposed to be up there? And I don't, I don't want it to be about me. I just want to help people and serve people. But I always have that gut feeling. And so recently I was listening to that and I thought, man, that's the thing. I just got to get out there. You start small and you grow and you build. You, you grow over you, time. You solve. You, you, your your speaking gets better. The how you you know interact with the crowd. I, I would love to start getting to speaking. I just not great with 
working crowds, right? It's about working crowds. It's about interacting with a crowd and large people. And like, it is something I want to do. Like, something I want to do even in 2022 is do Toastmasters, get better at speaking, get better, as well. right? It's, 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 but it's intimidating also, right? Like, I, I'm scared to get on Toastmasters because now I'm going to be put in a situation where I'm, I'm, I'm intimidated of that already. So, I think breaking the comfort zone 2022 for everybody really is like whatever that may be for them is really like what i'm seeing the underlying tone across the board whatever it may be if it's changing the brand of your company or changing the processes in your company or building processes in your company right, right? building getting out of your comfort zone which it really for me and i think for a lot of what i'm seeing in the industry right now is really the undertone of everybody's problem is getting out of your comfort zone win or lose you're going to make new neuro associations each time right and you're going to improve over time Gotcha. It's that neural connection is going to happen, and you will improve. You just have to start doing it. So if you walk away with one tip for guys who have been in this industry a long time or guys who are just getting in this industry, what's something you would leave off with them? Be kind. Like yesterday, two days ago, Matt said, Matt Mulholland said, yeah. you're like the nicest guy I've ever met. And I was <laughs> like, that's cool. And then yesterday, somebody said, you should get the award for the biggest heart in the industry. And I'm like, that's Thanks. cool. That's really awesome, and I've, I've, it's that's been an a award I want, right? But that's the thing. Like when when we're nice to people, people feel open to talk to us. And if people are open to talk to us, and we're open to listen, we're going to learn. Yeah. And if we're going to learn, then we're going to grow. And if we grow, we're going to make more money. We're going to help more people. Really appreciate it, well, David. Thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Guys, catch us on the only podcast on Apple, Spotify, and all the other podcast platforms. Yeah.